Hello and welcome to another video from Double O Realm. Uh, this video is a uh, 3D printing update uh, for uh, January uh, 2019. So I know it's been a couple of months since we've done a uh, major uh, 3D printing update. Uh, the reason for that is um, the Truckside 3D project. We, we sort of wanted to see where things were going with it. Um, we had a fantastic response. We, we've had a lot of people um, buying 3D printers and uh, downloading uh, tons and tons of our uh, STL files. So we'd like to uh, thank all of our customers for their business. And I know you guys have been very patiently waiting for this video as well as uh, the upcoming products. So one of the things we wanted to do was when we first um, uploaded the uh, project and started the website, um, it was really an experiment uh, to see uh, where things would go and, and how things would uh, be received. And since it was received really, really well, uh, we decided to uh, just uh, take a couple of months to try to uh, shore up the uh, the product line as well as sort of improve the website and so on. So uh, we've been working real hard uh, to update the website as well as uh, running about seven 3D printers 24-7 uh, uh, for the past couple of months. Uh, we've used uh, tons and tons of uh, PLA. And you can see here in front of me, uh, we have uh, quite a few uh, new products coming out and uh, some really, really, really cool projects. Um, now, the three ways we've been uh, building projects is we've been looking at uh, sort of what's been of interest on our website, so things people are downloading and um, purchasing more. Uh, we've also looked at things that we need for the double rail layout ourselves. So you can see here, I've got this uh, petrol station canopy and some other projects going on here. And you'll see here in a minute how those tie into the double rail project. Um, and then, of course, uh, we get requests as well from people where they want a specific product or a certain uh, design done, and we uh, try to accommodate them. So, in case you don't know, um, Trackside 3D is a uh, 3D printing project where basically um, we either make available the STL files for free uh, on our Thingiverse account, or we make them available for a small fee on uh, the trackside3d.co.uk website. You can, um, just like the printable card kits, uh, you can basically download our 3D image uh, files as much as you want, and um, you can print them out as much as you want for personal use. Uh, obviously, you can't resell them uh, for commercial use, but you know, uh, you, you can download them using your 3D printer. Now, if you don't have a 3D printer, but your friend has a 3D printer, uh, you're more than welcome to buy uh, the 3D image for your own use, and then go and, and print it on your friend's 3D printer. Uh, we have no problems with that, obviously. If you have 500 friends you're doing it for, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll question that, but uh, hopefully people will be honest. I, I do know that there are a couple other companies out there now that have started to do this, um, but they don't actually make the STL file available. They just make the 3D printed object available to you. Um, that's actually kind of expensive, in, in my opinion. Um, the PLA isn't, it is relatively cheap, but in order for somebody to 3D print the product, um, make it available, and then and ship it to you, it's it's going to be kind of negating some of the cost benefits of, of buying your own 3D printer. Uh, so if you get a chance, uh, you really should take a look at our website and uh, see what kind of um, 3D printer might be uh, best for you. Personally, I recommend currently the new JG Aurora um, A1. Uh, we've got two of those now, and uh, they're a little bit cheaper than the A5. They're a little bit more robust. Um, they are a little bit faster uh, as well, so they, they work uh, a little bit better. Uh, and they also have a removable bed, uh, so if it does warp for on you, uh, you can easily replace it. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do before I get into uh, showing you new projects is uh, we had two competitions, and um, I already talked to the uh, first prize winner, and uh, his prizes are on the way to him. Um, I kind of wanted to wait until I did this 3D printing uh, video update, and of course uh, life got in the way a little bit, and uh, various different things happened over the last... Uh, a month or two so it took a little while to get this video um, together but now that's together um, I thought I'd go ahead and announce the winners so first thing you remember is so we have a castle project and uh, we're actually um, building Victoria Tower on the uh, corner of the uh, double rail layout and I've actually got the second part of that done so we'll have an update video for you on that pretty soon um, but like I said I already talked to the uh, first prize winner and uh, his stuff is on the way to him right now um, but I wanted to announce the uh, joint second prize winners. Uh, so there wasn't too many entries um, with the correct entry uh, in the project. So I thought I'd just go ahead and give the second prize to both people uh, since they kind of 
responded with the same answer within a couple of minutes of each other. Um, so those two folks are uh, Mark Jukes, that's uh, M-A-R-C, and then his last name is J-U-K-E-S. And the other one is uh, Michael Buckley, that's uh, B-U-C-K-L-E-Y. Uh, you guys will know you've won because you basically uh, commented on the uh, Castle Project video. Uh, so if you don't mind, if you could reach out to me by email, uh, send an email to locoshed, that's L-O-C-O-S-H-E-D, at com, and we'll 3D print up uh, your prizes to you and get them mailed out. So the second competition we had uh, was over Christmas. Uh, so we decided to give away prizes for uh, the correct answer for people who guessed our um, video advent calendar videos, uh, which Loco um, was in those videos. And so there were quite a few people uh, that responded. There are some folks that won multiple prizes. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to read off the names of the winners. And if you guys can reach out to us by email, uh, like I said, just hit locoshed at com, and we will uh, get in touch and uh, get those prizes out to you. Um, so first of all, uh, the first winner is uh, Bob Sims. Uh, Bob responded to quite a few of the questions, so uh, Bob's got multiple prizes coming his way. Uh, the second person was Scott Malcolm, uh, then James W, then uh, Dandy ES1997, uh, Upwell and Onwards, Mickelover Test Track, R5455Lad Gaming and Photography, and then the final winner is John Wharton. So uh, if you guys uh, could reach out uh, to locoshed at com, or you can uh, drop a comment. I'll list the prize name winners uh, in the community tab on the uh, WRL channel. And uh, if you can get out, reach out to us in the next couple of days, uh, we'll figure out what prizes you want and we'll get them over to you. All right, so... Uh, Let's uh, go ahead and discuss what's happening with Trackside 3D. So um, we have about 100 new products uh, coming out. Uh, it's been a crazy uh, couple of weeks and months, but uh, we've got some really, really cool stuff going on. Um, so we decided to focus on a couple of areas. Um, one of the first areas we decided to focus on was uh, petrol stations. Uh, so one of the things I wanted to do uh, with the double rail layout, you'll have seen there's that kind of transition section and that you've seen with the video advent calendars. Uh, videos and you may have seen uh, this, the uh, petrol station canopy here and so what we've done is um, we basically produced a uh, petrol station canopy that's uh, 3d printed upside down and this part is actually a separate piece uh, so the base is uh, glued into the uh, stands uh, into the pillars and um, it is uh, more than happy to uh, stay completely upright uh, so we're quite happy with that and then obviously you would uh, paint or decorate it uh, in a manner uh, for what you want to do. So I'm actually going to be using a, or building an ESSO station. Uh, so you can see here, uh, we also 3D printed a uh, 70s, 80s um, ESSO uh, sign. So it's got the uh, ESSO kind of uh, shaped logo. It's got the uh, section for the pricing and then a uh, section for usually the Visa MasterCard symbols on the bottom. Um, and then it goes into a little base here that is uh, removable. So you 3D print the base um, by itself. And then uh, you 3D print this flat. And uh, that's basically it. You'll also see that it's at a slight angle. And uh, this is based off a couple of different petrol stations. We went through a lot of uh, photos and uh, Google Maps to uh, in Google Earth to get the measurements and so on. So um, the petrol station... Right now, uh, we have the canopy, and we also have several variants of the canopy. Um, if you look at various different uh, petrol stations um, throughout uh, the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, and 80s, and, and so on, uh, the canopies were quite different depending on uh, which uh, petrol station you're going to. It was Texaco, um, you know, BP, Shell. Um, they're all slightly different. They also had uh, slightly different uh, signage as well. So uh, to avoid any copyright issues, uh, we're just going to give you the shapes of the signage and you guys will need to um, decorate it out yourself. And um, the canopies though, we'll have a couple of different variants. This is a, a two um, pillar one. We'll also have a four pillar one, maybe a six pillar one. They're a little bit uh, larger to print. Um, we're also going to have a, a drop-in uh, kind of version for lights. Uh, so we've got ones where you can hide the lighting 
um, within the canopy as well to, to light it up. And so of an upcoming video, uh, we'll show you how to um, do all of that and uh, how to use the product on the uh, Delirial layout. So um, this we will be making available as part of our main product launch uh, over the weekend. So uh, keep an eye out for our uh, video announcement on that. So in addition to, we'll also be doing the pumps, by the way. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually going to cut over to what's running on the 3D printer right now. Uh, what's running on the 3D printer right now is actually a, a modular um, petrol station building. And uh, you'll see it can be used either as just a shop with a, uh, you know, a sort of maintenance uh, depot or sort of, um, you know, car mechanic sort of uh, workshop. Uh, or it could be used as a uh, showroom by simply just changing out the uh, the windows. Uh, so just like our other products, um, you will have the, the modular uh, windows and so on. So they'll just drop in and it uh, should work out um, pretty nice. So we'll cut over to that so you can see what the 3D printer is doing. And then we'll uh, go back to this and explain what's going on. So I hope you enjoyed uh, taking a look at what's going on with one of our 3D printers. Uh, that 3D printer you just saw is a JG Aurora uh, A5, and it's one of our workhorse type printers. Uh, so one of the things that's already up on the uh, website is our uh, post and frame um, uh, post fencing here. And the post fencing is uh, pretty straightforward. Um, it actually produces and is designed to produce a relatively thin um, but scale accurate um, set of fencing. Uh, it can be cut so you can uh, print it out as long as you want and then cut off pieces and shape it and so on. It's also uh, light enough uh, that with PLA it'll actually uh, curve. Uh, so if you want to have a straight section but you need to uh, force it into place, you can simply uh, curve it as much or as little as you want. And uh, you can basically glue it and hold it in place uh, so it works out pretty well. Um, we do have a new version of this that actually has pegs uh, underneath uh, for each one so that if you want to drill the holes and put it in place uh, to make it easier to install. Uh, we have that coming as well. Uh, you can see here, I've painted it with a kind of a wood. I think it's a Model Masters paint. Um, and it uh, turned out relatively nice. Um, and you can see there just at the end, uh, it shows you how you can see without it being painted. Um, so um, like I said, this is already up on the website and you can uh, download that today if you are, are interested. So, um, other projects we have going on, um, this is our uh, hard standing kit. Uh, this is going to come in uh, various different uh, sizes and lengths, uh, but you can see here it's uh, been uh, tapered in order for it to uh, simply drop in on the outer edges and spaced um, for a Pico Code 100 track as well as Hornby uh, Code 100 track. Uh, we also have uh, the piece that goes uh, in between the track uh, to create a realistic um, kind of cover over the uh, rails or over the sleepers uh, so you just have the rail exposed and uh, we're still um, testing this out but it's uh, looking pretty good you can see here um, we have the uh, kind of longer section as well now this piece here has the uh, brim attached to it you'd simply cut that off and if you don't want to deal with that you can also print it simply upside down uh, with a skirt or with uh, no build plate adhesion at all. It uh, seems to work pretty well as long as you get it off the printer uh, relatively quickly. So uh, one thing you can also do is uh, I've got a new camera angle. I've also got a new audio. Uh, so above here where you can't see, uh, roughly above uh, the center here, I actually have a, a professional studio microphone and uh, that's going over to our uh, main uh, workstation. Uh, that's actually recording the audio um, while I'll film it here on the GoPro 
which is located right here. Uh, several people mentioned that our uh, top-down view uh, was a little hard uh, to see some of the stuff up close. Uh, so hopefully uh, this view will make things a little bit better. And I know that the GoPro wasn't doing so well with the audio. Uh, so hopefully this uh, new microphone will improve the audio as well. So um, with that, um, you may have seen our existing ballast bins. Uh, these are LNER style. Uh, we also uh, found some pretty good photos on, in our uh, photo collection as well as uh, some other stuff while we were researching another project. Uh, so we managed to uh, knock out some different style uh, ballast bins. Uh, so we'll have uh, some updates on that on the new website and these will be available uh, as part of the main product launch as well. Uh, the LNER um, ballast bins are already available and have been available for uh, quite some time on our website. Okay, so uh, one of the most important things uh, people have been asking for is the uh, highly accurate, probably uh, the most accurate um, trunking system available on the market uh, for double O scale. And that is uh, now being expanded. So uh, you may have seen uh, in previous videos, we had our um, kind of straight lengths that are available in uh, 10 centimeter, five centimeter, I think, and uh, just uh, scale uh, components. Um, now what we've done is we've uh, actually expanded that to include all of the available curved um, versions. Uh, so every single uh, curved uh, trunking that you'd be able to get if you were British Rail uh, or Network Rail or, or any of the uh, kind of uh, you know British Railway standards um, sized uh, trunking, those are now all available um, through our website uh, as part of the upcoming product launch. Um, so this has worked out really well. I'm quite pleased with it. Um, like I said before, um, you can run cables through it, and uh, we have both sizes. So like there's the um, 1,000 meter or 1,000 millimeter and 1,500 millimeter, uh, and we have them all. You can see here the various different trunking sizes. If you watched our previous 3D printing video uh, update video, you will have noticed that we have signal bases uh, that are in the works, and uh, that signaling system um, will actually allow you to run the wiring. Um, with these uh, uh, trunking system uh, to run wires across top of your baseboard. So um, just the same way that they would um, uh, on the real railway, whether it's uh, British Rail, Network Rail, um, or so on. Now the coolest thing with these is that um, these are built from the manufacturer specifications. Uh, so we went out, uh, looked at the suppliers, uh, found um, old documents uh, with the schematics, and basically um, used those measurements to build a scale version and so uh, these are highly accurate and um, all the different uh, versions are available to you the same way it'd be available to British Rail uh, so you can actually build your model railway in the same manner in which um, British Rail would lay out infrastructure um, or Network Rail would lay out infrastructure depending on what era uh, you're modeling so uh, hopefully you guys uh, will find this uh, useful now the T-sections are still coming uh, the T-sections are a little bit more complicated and I have most of them done uh, so we'll and try to knock those out as well before the main product launch uh, this weekend. So I'm gonna set those aside. Um, I'm leaving this main project here, as you can see, uh, to the end, because it's uh, the coolest thing we have. Um, one of the things that we've been working on is a uh, platform uh, tool. So this is actually a uh, platform uh, spacing tool. Actually, no, it's not. Uh, this is, sorry, my bad. Uh, this is actually a road marking uh, spacing tool. Uh, so basically what this is for is it allows you to um, measure out the correct lengths for different roads. Uh, so if you're gonna cut material uh, to make a road, you basically line up one edge down here and then you pick the different size roads. So you have like a small road that might be like a, you know, country road or small town road. And then you have like standard sizes all the way up to uh, kind of the, the main road or dual carriageway that you'd have. So this is just a simple tool. Um, I used it to basically cut material so it was the right length for the uh, town scene for uh, the double RL layout. So um, this will also be available as part of that product launch. Um, let's see, oh. So um, one thing I'm gonna cut to now is the uh, wall scenes. Uh, so we have uh, some decorated wall scenes up that are basically our uh, 3D printed uh, walls. And those will be available uh, as part of the product launch as well. Uh, we painted those along the top with, uh, I think it was uh, aged concrete. I'm not sure if I have the uh, paint. Oh, here it is. Um, so 
aged concrete. Uh, basically, it's what we use to paint along the top. And then we used that spray adhesive, um, like this, and I just sprayed very lightly onto the uh, 3D printed product. And then we used the uh, Scale Scenes Ashlar uh, texture paper, and uh, we stuck that onto the 3D printed wall. So uh, this turns out really, really well. It looks uh, really, really nice. Uh, scale Scenes stuff is fantastic. And um, we used our um, texture papers and walls all throughout the double rail layout. And uh, so it made sense to reuse uh, their products again on our 3D printed uh, projects. Uh, so I highly recommend uh, using those as I dropped the uh, adhesive stuff on the floor. Uh, so one of the things we did 3D find when we were painting the walls was that it was a little tricky just to like, you know, paint it and have to hold it and, and so on. So um, I 3D printed up this, uh, basically a holder so you can uh, put this down and do, regardless of what size of the wall you're trying to paint you just simply slot it in place and uh, you can go ahead and paint the paint it uh, you know detail it whatever you need to do um, so this handy little tool will be available uh, through the double rail um, track side 3d side as well so um, moving along uh, we also have uh, some uh, wire fencing uh, so the th posts are 3d printed uh, you can see here, um, they're uh, pretty straightforward. I think these are seven wire. Uh, one, two, three, I think they're six. So yeah, these are seven wire. Um, so they're um, they're quite small. Uh, but you can see there, uh, the 3D printer, these do not have been processed or anything. These just came straight out of the 3D printer. Uh, you can see there that the uh, 3D printer made a pretty good job of uh, keeping the hole. And then um, what we're going to use is we're going to use uh, 30, uh, 30 gauge. Um, this is solid bus wire, I think. Um, it's really, really thin, and it's these uh, holes are designed to basically handle this type of wire. I got this off of Amazon, um, and basically all you do is uh, thread the wire through like so. Um, it's relatively easy, and you just space it out as you need. Uh, so probably what you do uh, on a layout is you basically glue the posts into place. And then run the wires through it, and it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then once you've run the wires through it, just cut it off on either end after it's been tensioned, and you're you're good to go. And uh, one of the reasons I looked at this was that I was actually going to use um, the uh, scale mall scenery um, posts. Uh, now you have to glue those together, but they're still pretty nice. Uh, and I know that uh, the various different other YouTubers have used them. Um, one thing that was uh, kind of caught my attention though was. Uh, Dave over at Dean Park Station had mentioned that it had taken him several hours uh, to put together the fencing. Uh, so I thought, wow, that's that, that's not not something that uh, I want to invest that amount of time in. Uh, so what I decided to do is figure out a way if I could uh, 3D print it. Um, so 3D printing it makes it obviously a lot easier. You don't have to um, assemble those posts and uh, you don't have to mess with any kind of uh, nylon wire or anything like that. Uh, you can just use the metal wire, run it through and you can do massive lengths of uh, fencing in just a couple of minutes and we'll show you that in a uh, upcoming video as well so i uh, hope you guys are look forward to that and so last but not least uh i'm going to show you uh oh actually i have another project before i show you this um so one of the big projects we've been working on i think i mentioned it in the previous video is our um dmu uh kind of uh depot or a uh, you know carriage uh, cleaning unit and so um this is a rather long project it's i think 11 uh, pieces all together um, and they're in two sections so it basically 22 uh, rather large prints these take about um a day and a half to print and uh, you can see that they've been designed with the uh, corrugated uh, look and feel to it um, we have this kind and we have a uh, kind with uh, windows basically uh, here and here and uh, this is still a prototype um, I had to do some changes um, the original version warped a little bit uh, because the uh, base here was only about one and a half millimeters thick uh, so we widened this up uh, to make sure that it didn't warp on the printer and that worked uh, a lot better um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a uh, clip-in lighting units uh, so you'll be able to clip in lights and uh, clip into this right here and then we also have the uh, roofing structure that will clip in um, on top um, and it'll complete the look. You can see there, um, we'll also have some 
uh, printable details that you can put on the inside as well. So I think when this is done, it's gonna be a fantastic project. Um, we're not gonna make this available yet. We're gonna wait till we, we finish it and all the components are available. Um, if anyone is interested in this, you can drop us a line at locoshed at rail.com uh, and we can um, maybe make it available to you uh, via private link uh, if you want to test it out. Um, you're more than welcome to uh, give it a go. Uh, this doesn't cost very much to print. I think it's like maybe two or three dollars. It doesn't use a ton of PLA, um, but it does take about two days to print, right? So it's uh, something like one day in 23 hours or something like that. Uh, but I'm quite happy with the end result, and we'll be able to paint this, and it will look uh, look pretty slick, I think. So um, the last thing we have are uh, the components for our uh, third rail electrification system. Um, so if you've been a long time viewer of Double Rail's channel, uh, you'll notice that uh, we have this uh, third rail line that runs. Uh, from the original part of the layout all the way around to the, the new part and um, one of the things that I wanted to add was the uh, substations uh, so there's a couple of different substations that you get on the market um, but I wanted to use one that was from the uh, Kent Coast electrification um, so I spent quite a lot of time uh, trying to track down uh, various design documents and so on and what I was able to find on eBay uh, was this which is the uh, Kent Coast, uh, is there a Kent Coast first phase electrification. Uh, this is a part of the another part of British Rail's modernization. Uh, you can see if I find the page in here, um, it's an extension of the electrification system. It's a quite a nice book uh, publication that was done, um, I think, in 1959. Uh, yes, yeah, so if you look here, that's what I was looking for. Um, you can see here, if I, uh, how easy it is for you guys to, to see that, but if I uh, tilt it upwards a little bit, I might be able to uh, make out that it was uh, produced by the southern region of British, Rails, British Rail in uh, May uh, 1959. Comes with a pretty slick um, kind of map and so on. And uh, we'll go into some more detail as to exactly uh, why I was looking at this. But one of the things that was uh, of interest to me was that it had um, some pictures of the infrastructure, including um, a substation. I can find it. Yeah, so here it is. Um, so here you can see um, this uh, particular substation building. Uh, so this is the one that we uh, modeled. Now, I spent quite some time uh, looking for these uh, on Google Maps and Google Earth. I was able to find it and I was able to approximate the uh, measurements. Um, the uh, transformer unit that you see here, I was able to find uh, similar or slightly more modern versions of it on uh, various different websites, including Alibaba, which uh, is a kind of a weird place to look for uh, modeling stuff, but they actually had uh, this particular uh, version of this particular unit. You know, they may have stolen the designs or something, but um, basically all the measurements were there on their site. So. Uh, I was able to match the KVA and do a little bit of research and find the appropriate pieces. So this was a very valuable um, resource and I was lucky enough to pick that up on eBay. Um, so you can see here what I've done is I've uh, 3D printed um, the uh, transformer and the uh, rectifying transformer unit uh, basically has this oil filled uh, unit and it kind of basically glues on here so the base and all this section here except for the uh, drum unit it's all 3d printed as one piece I believe I may have 3d printed it this way uh, I'm not sure that I might have 3d printed it this way I think I've 3d printed it upright um, and it worked out pretty well I was kind of concerned that this might not 3d print very well but it did um, and then we just used uh, standard um, super glue uh, to glue that in place and the whole thing was painted with uh, Mall Masters um, flat steel, um, and, and that worked out pretty well. Um, so the final part to this is going to be to paint up um, these sections right here, and these will glue on like so to the end, and then they'll also glue on. Um, you can see there, 
to the edge as well. And so I believe there's five in total. So uh, we have um, one, two here, and then three is a bit of a gap and one that's on the end. And this is some little other detailing that we're gonna add um, to the top of the unit as well. And I got some pretty good photos um, of the existing units uh, off of the internet. So we will use those uh, to add a little bit more detail to it. And then basically um, in the final piece, it basically sits um, like so next to the uh, unit. Now we will also 3D print a slightly taller version. Uh, this version was um, based on some uh, original uh, specifications that we were able to pull. And so uh, we'll also make a slightly bigger one uh, because there were a couple of different variants. Uh, now this unit itself is uh, one of the uh, substations. Uh, it's 3D printed in two parts. Uh, typically, uh, we like to 3D print things upside down so that you don't have to um, add supports. And uh, there's two parts to it. Um, there's this piece here that was PVA glued on the top when it was done. It too is 3D printed upside down. And then uh, the main building itself. Um, what I did was I painted the um, whole top of the roof as well as the edge with um, concrete from uh, flat concrete from Model Masters. And then um, basically we used spray adhesive and cut out the sections of the scale scenes brown brick and glued that to the structure as well. So there's a couple of detailing parts that I'm still working on and then we'll make this available. Um, those are some uh, grills here that, that basically are vents that go on uh, right here. And there's some, also some vents that go along the top here and along the side and obviously uh, the door as well. There's also a section that will go right here and that goes into the third rail as well as all the wiring that goes next to it. So all that kind of detail we have some from some photos as well and we'll connect that in. And then this will, as you've seen, uh, maybe some of the uh, video advent calendar videos, uh, this is gonna sit in the station at one end uh, near the level crossing and we may have some overhead wires attached to it as well. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet if uh, that's appropriate or not. Uh, one of the other things that we've built that's kind of related to this is uh, you have the substations every, uh, I think it's three, three and a half miles. And in between those, you had what are called track paralleling huts. Um, now this is one specific type of track paralleling hut uh, that was on the Kent Coast electrification line. Um, and this is one that there's actually quite a few photos of. I believe it's um, on the track uh, quite close to some houses. Um, I think it's in uh, Goring, if I remember correctly. And um, it was quite easy to pull measurements from, from photos as well as from uh, some technical information in Google Earth just to verify it. Um, so with these, I'm going to go ahead and decorate them again with the uh, scale scenes uh, brown brick. And then we'll also have the door detailing. And then we'll also have some custom signage um, that would be you would have seen on the side of the, uh, I think basically here on the side of the building. that will say uh, track paralleling or TP unit and uh, the name of the area. So we're going to use this um, between the houses and the wall part on that transition section of the layout. And I think it'll uh, work out pretty nice. And again, we painted the roof with the uh, concrete uh, color. So I think, oh, there's one more thing. Actually, there's two more things, I thought. So um, I'm not sure if folks have seen this or not, but uh, I got uh, one of the things I had on the layout was uh, have my uh, cup of coffee or, or cup of tea and uh, didn't want to uh, have coffee stains or, or, or tea stains um, on the layout or on my workspace. Uh, so I thought I'd knock together a um, coaster. And so this is a 3D printed uh, British Rail coaster. Uh, it has the uh, double arrow logo and you could always uh, put a label or uh, some sort of sticker at the bottom uh, with the name of your layout. I think I'm gonna go paint this up, uh, maybe red and this white and then put double arrow rail at the bottom. Uh, but you can see there's pretty substantial, a couple fit in it. And if your cup's too big, you can always flip it over and use it that way. Um, I think I'll put this on Thingiverse. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'll check. Um, and if it's not Thingiverse, I'll, I'll put it up there. And uh, last but not least, I wanted to show you um, the kind of end result of our, um, our partial end result of our uh, low relief houses. Uh, so this is part of the uh, railway side terrace. And uh, these are the uh, low relief um, building ends. Again, I cut out. Um, 
me move the camera up actually. So again, I uh, cut out um, these scale scenes, um, brown brick uh, texture paper uh, to write the shape of the house. And I also wrapped it around uh, the top of the chimney here. And that was a spray adhesive, perfectly fine. Uh, you can see here I painted uh, the window inside and the window ledge. And likewise, you can see here, um, I did it here as well. I wouldn't be too worried about being like fancy or clean because you're gonna go and stick the texture paper over the end, as you can see here. And then what you do is uh, any kind of fine edges, just the same way you do with a card kit. Uh, you can use, um, you know, pencils or this is a um, pastel pencil. Uh, and you basically uh, rub it along the edges where you can see white parts and it'll blend it in. You can also use weathering powders. I found that the pencil is uh, pretty useful. And uh, then what I wanted to show you is we use the uh, scale scenes um, tiling as uh, so the roof tiles. And we use the same method that they suggest, which is where you start off at the bottom and basically apply the tiles and strips all the way up. And you can see there it's created that sort of uh, textured look and we'll weather this as well uh, so that it'll look like it's uh, been draining and so on with some rain and so on maybe some moss uh, so we'll, we'll make that look pretty nice and um, I still have to do the other side so you can see um, that's how it looks and this doesn't take too long I think it took me about half an hour and I had to cut all the strips and glue them all into place and so on uh, it's a little bit of a painstaking process but it's well worth uh, the end result and the time the time I saved with 3d printing the building end and applying these um, it, it's, it was worth the effort um, we're also going to uh, 3d print um, the chimneys for this as you know uh, we have this mix and match system uh, for the railway side terrace and so um, we'll add to that um, with the chimneys and so on and maybe some television aerials and so this is going to sit on a base and then uh, we'll probably have uh, a truck paralleling hut off to the side and some walls and stuff and some scenic uh, stuff around it. So I think it'll look uh, pretty nice when we're done. All right, so I think that's it for uh, today's video. If you were a uh, winner, uh, go ahead and uh, reach out to us uh, either on the community tab on the channel um, or you can reach out to us uh, via email to locoshad at doublerrail.com. Um, we're gonna go and return to having uh, more regular uh, trackside 3D videos um, with the 3D printing updates uh, probably once a week if I can manage it um, basically um, like I said we were trying to get um, the new website sorted out as well as getting um, the kind of product plan and some prototypes uh, knocked together uh, one of the things that we're working on this week is we are finishing off like I said the T-sections uh, we are getting the website ready to, uh, to launch for the weekend and uh, we've got like about 100 products that we're adding to the to the system as well um so it should be interesting um we also have the signaling stuff uh, it's pretty much in the works um you'll see here that this is a uh, sme uh works uh, rework station um, i'll be doing a video uh, here shortly on how to use this uh, for soldering uh sme leds and that's going to be very important for our um 3D printed uh, signal projects. Um, you'll also notice on the new website when it comes out uh, this weekend, uh, aside from the nice look about it, uh, we've also organized uh, a lot of our trackside 3D products into a way where we're focused on the, um, the electrification section. So we have uh, overhead line equipment as well as a third rail. Um, we're also focused on the signaling as well as the uh, trunking system as well. Uh, and then we also have, of course, we have the railway side terrace. Uh, we also have our uh, station and platform stuff that's coming out. Um, I've been working on some uh, station canopy as well as different size um, platforms. And those have worked, turned out really, really nice. Uh, we also have, like I said, the um, you saw earlier in the video, uh, the petrol stations. Uh, so we have more of those coming out as well. So um, if you have any requests, as always, uh, please put it in the comments. If you're not a subscriber and you'd like to get some updates, uh, feel free to subscribe to the OOL channel and uh, by hitting that subscribe button. And of course, if you want to get the notifications, uh, hit the bell as well. Um, one of the biggest questions we keep getting is uh, whether or not we're going to um, try to 3D print rolling stock. Um, I can tell you that we've been working on it for the past month or so, 
and we have some really cool stuff uh, coming in the pipeline. So stay tuned for that. Um, one of, oh, one of the other things someone asked was if all our stuff's designed for um, double scale, right? So they asked if um, you could 3D print the stuff uh, in N scale or O scale or HO scale. So what we're doing is we're going to put together a chart on the website of the uh, amount you need to scale uh, all of our 3D printable products so that you can reuse them for other scales. Um, so we're always going to design for, for double O scale. Um, and you know, at, at one is to one, it'll print the thing out for, for double O scale. However, um, it's very, very simple to just get plug in the right numbers in Cura and go ahead and send it to the, your 3D printer um, for other scales. Now, obviously, some things are not going to work in, in O scale. For example, if you try to scale this up in O scale, it really isn't going to fit in the 3D printer. Uh, unless you get a, a much larger uh, industrial type 3D printer. Um, however, it should work for N scale, um, and hopefully it won't uh, scale the buildings down too much. Uh, one thing that you may have noticed, um, so with this particular building, we experimented uh, with slightly thinner walls uh, just to speed up the uh, print times. That worked okay. Uh, we had a couple of print issues, but it's still, still usable. Um, We've got two versions of this now, so there'll be uh, the slightly wider wall as well as the thinner wall. Um, but for some of the smaller buildings, we've just gone ahead and kept it with the uh, slightly thicker wall. And the reason for that is create some more uh, substantial products and uh, you have less of the problems with the uh, peeling of lines if there's anything off uh, with your leveling on your 3D printer. All right, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions or comments or anything, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, congratulations to our uh, competition winners. And uh, I do apologize for it taking a little bit longer than I was expecting. All right, so I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time.